All right, we have another two vectors to add here. We have uh, vector A is 20 kilometers south, and vector B is 50 kilometers, 37 degrees west of north. So we start by drawing in our vector diagrams. Okay, we have vector A. Okay, this is vector A. Here's where we started. Okay, I'm just going to mark that on here. All right, now for the next part, 37 degrees west of north. Um, so basically, recall that you're facing north first, and you're measuring 37 degrees to the west. So the angle would look something like this here. So this would be 37 degrees. So when I look at vector A, vector A is pointing south, which means if I kind of look at this in terms of this being south, going up in the opposite direction of A would be north. 37 degrees to the west would be this angle here. So then vector B would start at the end of A, and we would draw this vector B 50 kilometers, 37 degrees west of north. All right, here's the end of vector B. Here is we end our problem. So the next step would be to figure out what our result is. So if we draw a straight line from the start to the end, put the tip of the arrow towards where we end up, this would be my result vector. So ultimately, our goal is to find the components for the result, in, which is in green, and then reconstruct what the result is to come up with a magnitude and a direction. Okay, if we look at vector A, vector A goes south 20 kilometers. So we will put 20 kilometers in our chart. East and west, it goes nowhere. All right, now if we look at vector B, vector B goes two directions. It goes west and it goes north. So we're going to have to draw components going west and north for vector B. Alright, so vector B, we're going to draw its components in here, and I'm going to use blue so you guys can see that pretty clearly. Here would be B, and this is going west, and then straight up, this would be B and going north. Alright, this would be the right angle between these two. This here is 37, which means this here is 53. Okay, so we can do this one of two ways. I'm going to use 53 in this and I'll show you quickly again how to use 37. How I can redraw this to use 37. But for intents and purposes to find the north component we will have to use um, sine of 53 would be B north divided by 50. All right, the north component would then equal sine of 53 times 50 which would be 40 kilometers to the north. Okay, so then I can put 40 in here to the north. Alright, if we find the west part we would then have cosine of 53 this would equal west divided by 50 so 50 cosine 53 would be <clears throat> 30 kilometers. And that would be your west component. So west in this case was negative, so this is going to be 30 kilometers to the west. All right, so now we've broken down both our vectors. Up on the screen should have just shown up another vector B drawn. Um, I'm just showing how you guys can also use 37 degrees if you wish to use that. Um, what I did here was just redraw this. I just redrew vector B outside of this picture. Sometimes the picture can get crowded, so if you want, you can redraw it outside. It makes life a little bit easier. There's your right angle. This would be the component of B going north, this would be the component of B going west, and the only difference is 37 degrees. 
Okay, so the west side you would end up using sine of 37, and the north side you'd end up using cosine of 37 degrees in order to figure out what the north component is. Your answers would it should be exactly the same. So that's an alternative way to have done that. All right, just clearing this up for a moment. All right, now we can take our parts and we can figure out what our resultant would be. So altogether, if we go 20 south and 20 north, altogether we would have gone 20 north. So 20 kilometers north and then 30 kilometers to the west. If you look at your diagram, the resultant arrow looks like it goes about 30 kilometers to the west and 20 north. So then we can use Pythagorean theorem. So we have 20 squared plus negative 30 squared. Okay, when you square that negative sign, that would equal the resultant squared. <clears throat> Once you solve for the resultant here, you will end up with approximately 36 kilometers. Okay, that would be the magnitude of your resultant. Alright, I have the magnitude of my resultant, but I'm a little hesitant to draw in a little more on this diagram because it's already crowded as it is. So if that's the case when you're doing these problems at home, um, you can just draw it separately off the diagram. So what I have, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to draw the components of the resultant. So this here would be 30 kilometers going to the west, and this here would be 20 kilometers going north. Okay, my resultant would run start to the finish. This would be R. We calculated that to be 36. Okay, it's time to take some angle measures. So, looking at this, if this is my angle, I'm measuring from the west, uh, from the west axis and going north. So, this would be north of west. Now, to get that answer, um, if this is my unknown angle theta, this is going to be opposite. 30 would be adjacent. So we would have tangent of our unknown angle is equal to 20 over 30. If you take the inverse tangent of this, theta would equal 33.7 degrees. Since we started on the west axis and essentially turned to the north to measure it, this would be 33.7 degrees north of west. So our final answer would be 33.7 degrees north of west, and the magnitude would be 36 kilometers. One last quick thing, if you chose to reference a different axis, in other words, if you chose to reference the west axis, excuse me, the north axis, and solve for this angle here, purple, you would have gotten 56.3 degrees. And since it's measured from the north going west, this would be 56.3 degrees west of north. So either of these two directions are correct, and the magnitude is about 36.